Hey guys, I get a lot of questions about can I write off my travel expenses? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about when you can deduct travel expenses as a real estate investor. In fact, it's really quite simple if you follow these simple but critical steps. Now, if you wanna learn more about properly structuring all your real estate investments and protecting your assets, you can register for our free tax and asset protection live event at the link below. But now, let's talk travel deductions. All right, there's some simple rules that go into deducting your travel if you're a real estate investor. The first rule is your travel needs to be away from home. And I'm not talking about driving your car and going out and looking at your properties locally. I'm talking about getting on a plane, a train, a boat, or some other mode of transportation to go and either visit your properties or to go and look at properties uh, to consider investing in. So the first rule we look at, is it away from, from, from your residency in which you live? Now, the second rule we want to know is when you're traveling, what counts as a business day? So the general rule is this. If you plan to travel for your real estate investing, in order to deduct the cost of your travel, let's say that, you know, I live up here in Washington State and I want to fly all the way across the country to look at my North Carolina investments. And the cost of my travel airline ticket there and back is going to be $2,000. Because heck, Clinton wants to travel first class, right? Because you get free drinks up there. So I'm going to travel first class for 2000 bucks to get out there and back. And I want to write off that entire travel time. Well, in order to write it off, you have to make sure that the majority of your time is spent on business-related activities. And therefore, you can uh, write off this, this entire travel amount. So what we do is we figure out how much time am I going to spend in North Carolina on my real estate? So let's just say this is one day of travel here. While I'm in North Carolina, I'm going to spend three days looking at my real estate. Now, a day, a business day when you're traveling counts as four hours. So if you're traveling out to North Carolina or Hawaii to look at your property, don't go to the beach right away. You have to spend at least four hours doing stuff on your property in order to get that day to count because these days are important. So in my example, if I flew out to North Carolina, I spent three solid days working on my property. Then I jumped on a plane and I flew back. I was gone for a total of five days. Now, how many of those five days of travel did I spend on business? Well, the IRS, the Internal Revenue Code, that is not the IRS, the Internal Revenue Code allows us to count each of our travel days as a business day. Plus, as long as we work at least four hours a day while we're at that place, we can count each of those days as business days. So in this example, I was gone for a total of five business days. I spent five business days working. Now, if I went out there and I didn't spend, I, I mean, I spent three days and then I decide, you know what, I wanna go out to the beach and spend three days just laying on the beach and working on my wonderful tan. Well, I could still do that and still deduct my travel. So when you travel for business, you can still have fun. It doesn't have to be solid business days or make sure each day you're working four hours a day. You can still spend some time doing other things if you fall under this rule that at least 50% of your time while you're at this location, you conducted business. Now you see here, you look at this, you say, well, Clint, that's pretty evident. You spent three days uh, working on your properties. You spent three days playing. 50% of your time was conducting business. Well, how about this? Rather, I'm, so, I'm enjoying this so well, I know I need one more day in the sun. I choose to spend four days at the beach. Can I still deduct the cost of my travel if I spent four days? Well, the answer to that is yes. Because when we're doing this calculation to determine whether or not you spent 50% of your time on business, what you get to add into your business days are not only the days you spent at the location, but you also get to count these two days here. So my total time spent on business are the two travel days plus the three days, it's five days, and the time spent screwing around is four days. Satisfied that test, didn't I? So keep that in mind. When you're traveling for business to work on your rental or real estate, you can still do other things. Just document that you spent those time, the, the, the requisite amount of times, just add them up. As long as that's more than 50%, your travel costs will be deductible. Now, when you travel out, um, and you want to stay at your own place, for example. Can you deduct that, that as well when I'm staying at my own, my own house? For example, um, 
there was a time when I had one of my properties in Palm Spring and I needed to replace the tile on the deck. So I could have hired it out, but I said, you know, it's a nice, it was in April, it was a nice time down there. So what I did is I flew down to Palm Springs, my wife and I, we went there, we bought the tile, ripped the tile off the deck. Now I didn't work all day long because it got too freaking hot. So I'd put in four hours while I was there and I'd spend the rest of the time enjoying myself. And I stayed at my own property while I was there. Why I'm staying at my own property, because I was working on that property, that all counted towards my travel time. So you can stay your own, at your own property and you can still get the deduction. Now, a lot of times people want to know, if I'm traveling for my retro real estate activity, what is deductible? Well, there's a lot of things that are deductible there. All your transportation expenses are going to be deductible. So you get in a cab, you go out to your property, you get an Uber, you rent a car, you can write that off. You can write off 100% of your lodging expenses. So if you're staying at a hole, a hotel, uh, you're not a hole, but if you're staying at a hotel, you can write that off. All right, I wonder how many comments are going to be in the, the video there. Clint stays in holes. Um, you can write off 50% of your meals while you're traveling. Laundry, dry clean services, tips, all those expenses are deductible while you're traveling for business. Now, the one thing to keep in mind here, remember when I was talking about the days? When I was in North Carolina, if I go out to the beach for four days, my hotel stay in food during those four days, non-deductible because I'm not conducting business. Only when you're conducting business are those expenses deductible. So if I'm out there and I, you know, I spend three days on business, the so three days I'm there, hotel, meal, all that stuff's deductible, but then the other three days, I can't write that off. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about travel days, guys. Hey, if you, if you want to get real creative in your travel, let's say you're going to go to Hawaii. So this is something that um, I used to do in the past. I would fly to Hawaii. If you set up your business so that you had to work on Thursday and Friday and you had to work on Monday or Monday and Tuesday of the following week, when you travel, you can write off the entire cost of your travel now and because those weekend days can count, you can drag them under your, your business travel and, re, and even write off those expenses because your business requires that you stay over the weekend to do uh, work the following week. So there's some rules or some, some uh, planning opportunities that you have here when you're traveling to desirable locations where you may own real estate or maybe you don't own real estate. One of the questions that people ask me all the time, can I travel and view properties and write that off? Well, if you're already a real estate investor and you want to travel out to Hawaii to write off properties, if you're going to spend your time there, yes, you can write off the cost of that travel. So here's what I would do. I would travel out to Hawaii and what I, I'd go out and I'd rent a, a Harley because I, I like to ride a Harley when I was there. And I'd get on my bike and I'd travel around. I'd drive around. And I'd look at various properties. So I'd set up showings to go out there. I would keep all the little brochures, put them in my bags uh, after I looked at the properties. And I was serious about investing in Hawaii at the time. Now, I didn't actually find a property at that for those few years. Later on, I did invest there. But at that point in time, I didn't. So I kept uh, documentation for all of the visits I made. So if I got audited and someone said, hey, this was an excuse for you just to go to Hawaii. I said, no, I'm a real estate investor. I got these other properties. I was serious. Here's proof that I was actually there looking at properties. And that's when it comes down to audit proofing your travel. You need to document your activities. As I just shared with you, when I was traveling um, for business, I would document the things that I were doing in furtherance of that business. So if you're a real estate investor and you wanna to travel to out of state to look at real estate because you're not yet invested there, you're able to do it. If you follow the rules that I've laid out for you, you'll be able to deduct the cost of your travel, your hotel stays, 50% of your meals, as long as you spend at least four hours a day looking at real estate and you're documenting what you're doing. You know, this is just one small benefit of being a real estate investor, the ability to deduct your cost of travel. There are so many other deductions that are out there if you're a real estate investor. And if you want to learn more about how to use the tax code to your benefit, I'd like to invite you to our tax and asset protection workshop. You can click on the link below. You can join myself and Toby Mathis. We host this event. It's a live event. You're going to come there. You're going to learn about LLCs, corporations, land trusts, wholesale trusts. You're going to learn how to use the tax code to your advantage as well. And more importantly, we're going to bring with us tax strategists and attorneys that will be on that event with us live answering your specific questions to make sure we can take your investing to a whole nother level.